Stationary points exist when? When the first derivative is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, stationary points when the first derivative is equal to zero. That's this. 2 minus 72 on x squared equals zero. Okay. So when I go ahead and try and uh, map this out, I'm going to get this. Is that okay? Going to multiply and I'm also going to divide. So that gives me this on this. Now what would you like me to do? I'll take the square root of both sides, but of course while I do that, I know that there are two square roots of, well two values that could satisfy this, right, once I take the square root, plus or minus six, okay? Aha, but remember, our second step in this whole process was, note the restrictions, so one of these solutions is invalid. So I'm literally gonna say, but x is greater than zero, right? Therefore, x equals six only. Please don't skip that. Let me highlight it here. Don't just say, oh, I know the restrictions in the back of my mind. I'm just going to write down the ones that apply. Okay, just go straight to x equals 6. That may be true. You may be thinking all of that, but you haven't demonstrated that you know what's going on, that there's two solutions, but one is invalid for this reason that you said before. Okay, so it's a small thing, but please go ahead and state it. All right, question. Wouldn't it be more like rigorous and stuff to say that it's the... At which line are you talking about? So you get to the last line, well, here. actually here? the last line. You get x squared equals 36. Yes. And, um, and so the answer is plus or minus 6, but since it's a link, you're talking about the magnitude of your answer. And so rather than saying because it's negative, you should say it's the magnitude. The short answer is no. Because, let me explain. So what what... What Eric's talking about is, out of here, why don't I just say the absolute value of whatever answers there are, okay? Um, the reason why this is not the case is because I could have crafted a different set of constraints and that kind of thing, such that suppose, 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 mm, so suppose my solutions um, out of here end up being not, not this, right, which is, what, which is what I have, but suppose it was something like this, oh, I don't know. Okay, suppose that was after I, I did all my calculus and worked out what was going on, that's what I got. Okay, well here I'm going to get two solutions, aren't I? Negative 14 or 2. Now, it's not just the magnitude, like four, negative 14, I can't just say I'd like it to be positive, so therefore 14 is where it's going to occur. That's not in the domain. So I can't just say, yes, this value and just make it positive because because I'm, I'm supposed to be positive, this is actually an invalid solution. It's not that it's the negative version of a valid solution. There isn't an x equals 14 over here to which it corresponds. This is the solution, not the absolute value of that. So that's the reason why, okay? Okay, so I've done my model, I've done my restrictions. Have I finished with calculus? Am I done? Hmm. Now, what have I established so far? Well, you can work this out. This is why your connective tissue, your words and that kind of thing, you're not many of them, um, are so important. What have I done? I've only found stationary points, right? But I'm looking for a minimum. So I actually have to go a little bit further to establish that this is a minimum. What could I use to do that? I can use the second derivative or I could test either side for the first derivative. Um, have a look at the function. There's the derivative. Second derivative or first derivative? Remember, I know it looks like a quotient right now, but it's not really, right? It's not really a I mean, I don't have to write it as a quotient if I don't want to. I think second derivative is easy. It's just a power, okay? So to determine the nature, I'm going to go ahead and differentiate again. So this is d squared p on dx squared. Um, the 2 contributes nothing. I'm going to start doing that thing with the power, so that's going to be... 144x to the negative 3, so that's 144 in x cubed. Okay, so when x equals 6, when x equals 6, the second derivative is what? 144 on, that's 216, isn't it? 
216. Now I could simplify that, but I don't need to. I have a number. All I'm interested in is not the size, but the, the sign. I'm just looking in positive or negative, right? So this, this d squared p on dx squared is greater than zero. That means it's concave up. which is a relief because concave up means a minimum, which is what we're searching for. Okay, so now I have established, it's not just a stationary point, it's a turning point and it's a minimum turning point. Now I'm done with my calculus. Okay, so tick. What's the last thing? I actually got to find the perimeter. Like the question is about perimeter, not the dimensions. Where is it? Not the dimensions that give me perimeter. Okay. Thankfully, it's quite easy to work out. If this is six and this is six, then what's the width going to be? Also six. Are you happy with that? Does that make sense? So, um, by the way, just as a minor quick point, um, you're often asked a question like this, um, what are the circumstances which minimize perimeter or minimize area, that kind of thing, uh, and you often end up with equilateral shapes, that's not a coincidence, um, so you'll get this quite a bit, like when you get, say, a very, very common one that the HSC loves to pull out, is they say there's some kind of shape that's inscribed in a circle, okay, so I could inscribe a rectangle in a circle, it would look like this. Right, here's a rectangle and I can sort of squash and, and, and stretch it. Or alternatively, they might say, hey, can you inscribe a triangle inside the circle? Right? And do, do the same kind of thing and you will almost always find it's an equilateral triangle. Okay? So you know if you've got your intuition here and you get to an answer, you're like, oh, is it an equilateral thing? Yeah, we often get those, so no surprises there. Okay? So, just to review. The first part where you probably got to do the most active thinking is you've got to create the model, okay? If they don't give you pronumerals, you need to introduce them yourself and sometimes that's part of the question. Once you've got your model, just watch out for the restrictions. This is actually the, the simplest kind of restriction there is because you get lots of geometry problems in here and that's like an, a default, okay? But sometimes you will have weird other restrictions based on time or distance, just go read the question carefully. Note them before you do any calculus because once you start differentiating and finding things, like this sort of hijacks your brain and you forget that you're in a question with context. Do your calculus, don't just find a stationary point, make sure you determine its nature, um, and then make sure you actually answer the question once you've got a stationary point, whatever it happens to be. Okay?